Hey everyone, today we are in northwestern Pennsylvania and I just found a beaver swamp that is very flooded up against the road. I'm pulling in right here where this oil well is just so I can gear up, get my big high boots on, change my clothes, get ready to do this. It's a couple hundred feet down the road from this well. All right everyone, we're ready to pull down the road and unclog this beaver swamp. Today in Pennsylvania, it is 44 degrees. Some trees are already starting to bud. Not around here, but the lower elevation part of the state, the grass is already turning green. Here, I'm imagining very recently the snow melted. You still can see piles in parking lots, piles on the edges of people's roofs where it slid off. So you'll see right here to the left side of the road is pretty flooded out. We come here a couple times a year and have to unclog this. You see they have it marked with ribbons down that end. There's usually a beaver dam inside the drainage ditch that has to be removed. Not today, but I bet by the end of summer that will be back. Just pulling off the road completely. Let's get out and look at the situation. All right, everyone, it's actually pretty warm out. 44 degrees, you may say, is not warm, but it sure is when I just came from northern Maine a couple days ago. So right here is the discharge of the culvert pipe. It's got a little bit of excavator damage, but it's always been like that. We're going to get this thing blasting. We're going to get this channel of water here flowing real well. You see further down there, in the summertime, they always build a beaver dam down there. Not today. It's still completely unclogged from when we were here back in the fall. I'm kind of surprised they still built it back, even though I unclogged it in the fall. It was actually snowing that day. But yes, they put another dam here for us to get rid of. Look at this big flooded area. We're gonna drain back all this water. Right there's the plugged pipe, a couple feet below the water. You can't even see it. Time to get the rake out and set up camera number two. Alrighty, everyone, camera number two is going. Oh, it's already sucking water in. We'll get this thing completely open in no time. Grinding the rake back and forth, letting all that current suck it right through. If I was to accidentally let go of this rake, it would be gone very quickly. But I don't think it would get stuck. Oh, we're starting to get a whirlpool going. Yeah, we got a good amount of current here. We're gonna drop this water down about two feet. Basically got the pipe open almost all the way. This time of year, the beavers are not very active, but whenever there isn't ice on the pond, they got the potential to build back. And this time of year, it's too late in the year. It's not gonna freeze up again. This is also a secondary beaver pond. They don't live here. They live on the other side of the railroad tracks right up there. Just gotta keep getting this thing open. It's gonna take hours to see any noticeable water drop. Look at that big whirlpool. Now I'm grinding away a channel so it can actually drain down to the level of the pipe. Because the beaver dam is actually going out like five feet away from it. It's got a very big base.
Oh, we got exceptional flow going now. I can hear it loudly on the other side of the road. Ooh, stinky gas bubbles. Luckily, I got a cold. I can't smell any of that stuff today. We'll probably disturb some more, yep. Look at all those stinky gas bubbles. That's where we're ripping apart the speaker dam. The water level's not that high, but if it went up any more, this time of year when it's warm at night, it gets down cold during the night, and it's warm during the day, I meant to say. Warm days, cold nights. That's when this high water table causes frost to the water. This is a problem we're taking care of. But I believe this thing is fully open. Not very deep down, so I'm not worried about getting sucked in or anything. Just feeling around. There is like a stick or something inside there. Yeah, I just up. Feeling a little bit of excavator damage. Let's chip away a little bit more at the edges. Yeah, definitely. We got that thing open to 100% of its capacity. Wow. We got that thing open good. Let's go look at the other side. You can see a ton of current right here going towards it. It keeps trying to make a little bit of a whirlpool. If, you, if I stand there blocking it the right way, it will. That is draining super fast. This whole swamp is going to drop like two feet over the course of the next couple hours. See that, the grass is already starting to turn a little bit green for the year. And wow, look at the other side blasting. And here's what it looked like before. We're gonna get this thing blasting. We're gonna get this channel of water here flowing real well. You see further down there. And here's what it looks like after. Big difference. Even the beaver dam down there, that we cut a slit in. It's holding up a little bit this time. I remember before we made the slit in the pipe way down there, the water was backing up where this culvert was actually underwater, which meant it could have easily frozen up in this very high elevation of Pennsylvania. Because this area does get very, very cold. I remember I came here once in the winter, snow piles on the edges of this road, higher than the vehicle. This was so frozen solid when I came here once. Does anybody know what these six inch, maybe eight inch PVC pipes are sticking out of the ground? I, th I think it has to do with something with checking water quality because there's a big oil well down there you saw me pull into and the other way down the street, a couple hundred feet, there's a couple more with a gigantic 
I don't know how big, many tens of thousands of gallons holding tank for it. Let's get a close up look. And look at all these sticks the beaver chewed. That's kind of cool. They do that because the bark is actually their food. Yeah, there's nothing stuck there on the end. That thing is at capacity, definitely. See that big stick? That was actually floating before we removed the beaver dam down there in the fall. We are going good. Let me pack everything away and maybe we'll get an update of this area in maybe an hour or so on the way back. See how much we may have dropped. Look at that turbulent whirlpool. Nice. I hope this video looks better than usual. This is actually my first unclogging video ever that's being recorded in 60 frames per second 4K. I finally upgraded my camera because my other videos I usually do in 1080, they look perfect to me, but when I upload them to YouTube, they really diminish the quality because they don't want to pay for the storage. They really make my videos of water look pixelated because this uses up a lot of storage. But I don't think it'll look as bad in 4K. Especially with 60 frames per second. All right, everyone, looking around the beaver swamp now. It's only been about 20 minutes since we arrived on scene. Can already see these areas where it's shallow, showing a lot of more muck and mud. Good amount of current coming through that crevice right there. The beavers probably excavated that. They actually excavate little canals into the woods where they're able to drag back supplies to build dams easier out of the way of predators. I'd say we dropped back probably six inches so far Still got way over a foot to go. Now that it's dropped a little bit, you can see even on this, see, where the water was, dropped down about six inches. Pretty soon that pipe is gonna be showing. We'll stop by here again in like a half an hour, maybe an hour, depending on what we find down the road at another location we usually do. So one time I went walking in the swamp, could not find a beaver dam, so this, is most likely a secondary pond. And I believe they live on the other side of that's railroad tracks. That culvert is not clogged because this is all level with it. I'm surprised they never tried building it there instead. The train company is usually less likely to be unclogging stuff, but the beaver don't know that. There is a much bigger pond on the other side there. But beavers will clog up any moving water, especially on their adventures downstream to this pipe. This is draining a lot faster than I expected, so I do expect a big difference by the time we get back. You can see the water moving quite fast out of the drainage ditch. The shallow areas are draining really fast. And now that a lot of its area is already gone, the remaining deep spot's gonna drop pretty quickly. We'll be back in a little bit to check on it. You guys can probably hear it on my voice. I do have a little bit of a cold today. It's one of those colds where you ever have one and you feel really good in the afternoon, but it comes back every night into the morning? You seem to get over it every afternoon, but it comes back for a few days. That's what I have today. Not very pleasant. And if you're interested in seeing, this is the other oil well I was talking about. There's no sign saying we can't pull in here immediately. And I think there's even more oil wells if we were to drive down beyond that gate right there. I've been here in the past, you see these big tanks, It, I'm thinking this is oil, it may be natural gas, it's possible, but I've seen trucks coming here to get this stuff out of here. See there's an oil well down there. They're not pumping today, but every time I've come in the summer they usually are. Those things are all over the woods around here. Take a look at this area, everyone. There's no traffic out here. This area is all flooded. I've never been to this area to do an unclogging, but it looks like there is a culvert pipe here. Yes, there is. So we're gonna pull over right here without falling into the pond, and we're gonna see what's going on. By the look of the grate, there may not be an issue. Let's just get out and look but it is flooded and not coming out the other side. I've never seen it flooded like this. But you can see right up there, you see how they had to repave around that low corner? 
frost heaves just destroyed that. That looks like it may have been paved even this year. All right, so getting out of the vehicle, that's where the pipe comes out right there, where all those cattails are. You can even see a little, no, that's not a hump from it. I don't know why that's there. So here we are. This structure, entire structure actually looks plugged up. I think it's supposed to just pour over the top. I've never seen this area flooded. I can tell it's usually a swamp. Looks like some sort of beaver structure might be there usually. That looks like an internal blockage. Not that I can lift this grate anyways. Yeah, that thing's way too heavy. I'd hurt myself trying to get that thing off. Let's go look at the other side. Yeah, the other side is really plugged up also. Take a look at that. This thing needs a serious jetting, probably a dredging down here at the end. Can't really do anything here. Yeah, so I just got out there. There is absolutely nothing we can do about this flood. I've just never seen it before. You can see how it's also destroying the edge of the road, and it looks like they may have even repaved it this year because of frost heaves during the freeze and thaw cycles. So right there on the left side of the road, there is actually a grate that allows the water to become another foot higher before it starts pouring into it. I do recommend a good dredging there on the discharge of the culvert because I can't even see it. It looks like it's causing water to even back up inside the structure where I couldn't see the pipe. That's going to need to be done with an excavator. It needs to dig out the discharge channel. So right now we're driving back down to that other one again that we unclogged today. It's now been about 20 minutes. Just let me turn around and we'll take one final look at that. The pipe should be showing by now, I would imagine. This is kind of cool. Look at this maple sugar farm. It's very huge. And look at the line going over the road for the maple syrup to go back. And there's even lines here going under the road in that culvert pipe. Very elaborate system of pumps. That's pretty awesome to look at. Oh, look, another one just went in that storm drain to go under the road. That's pretty cool. Huge maple syrup system there. All right, everyone, pulling back up on scene. The water is already noticeably lower, and it'll probably continue dropping for another hour or so. That dropped way faster than I ever thought it would. It's pulling off the road again. All right, we're back. Look, the water in the drainage ditch is all gone. All the darker areas, you can see the grass was underwater starting to rot. We lowered this down a ton. We dropped almost two feet already, and it's got maybe another, almost another foot to go. I didn't even realize how deep that was, but I guess almost to the top of my big high boots, and I was standing on top of the beaver dam, I guess that channel I dug to get it down to the depth of the pipe yeah, I guess that is around three feet. Take a look. Very muddy. Look at that. We can finally see the pipe, and it's got another foot to go. But I'm sure beavers will be on the scene, maybe even tonight. But this is a secondary pond, so you got to remember, the beavers may not even show up for weeks. Because they don't live there, so they're not going to just notice it in their lodge, water dropping down. You can already see on the other side... It is not flowing nearly as heavily as it was before. No longer at capacity. I'm walking in the water to rinse off my big high boots. Definitely lower than it was before. Flowing good. The water's actually a bit stinky. I'm actually starting to be able to smell things. It is a bit stinky there. Lots of rotting material. So here's what it looked like before at its highest blasting rate. Yeah, you can see that drop back a bit in the other side of the road. Here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. A pretty good drop. That looks like that actually may have been a beaver dam back in the day, but it's abandoned has no visible entrances. I hope today's video was interesting, everyone. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.
Take a look at this everyone, big piles of rocks falling into the road because this time of year the freezing and thawing cycles almost every night, it's pushing the rocks apart. This is the second area I've seen them have to shut down, a lot of rocks falling off this mountain. It's warm during the day, very cold at night.